So now that we've showed you what Nearpod can do, we're going to give you a little bit of a video intro onto how you can set up your own Nearpod. So the first thing you're going to want to do is open up your internet browser of choice. Um, I tend to use Google Chrome. So you'll open it up and that'll take you to your homepage. You can just go to nearpod.com. And if you have your own account already, you can just go to login and type in your login information. But if you don't, you're going to have to click on don't have an account, sign up now. And you're going to enter all of your information. I would recommend entering your school information because Prospect does have their own account. So when you go down to institution and you type in Prospect, um, Prospect High School should automatically fill. Um, and then when you hit submit, it will link you to the Prospect purchased account. So after you've created your uh, login, uh, you just go back it, to the Nearpod site. Um, it actually, I believe, uh, will, once you've created it, automatically log you in. But normally, you would just go back to the Nearpod site, um, click login, type in your email. You can look at my account here. And this is what it will bring up the page um, where you're going to create your Nearpods. Okay. Um, there's all kinds of things. I'll go through the creation first. So when you create a Nearpod, uh, you'll see all the Nearpods you've created before. Um, but when you want to create a new one, you're just going to click New Presentation. And this is where um, you can either start from scratch. If you look down here, there's a start from scratch. Um, if you've got Dropbox or other things where you have other presentations, uh, that's fine. Um, but the best way, I think, to, to kind of you know, use what we've already used and, and what I usually do is I usually um, just create a PowerPoint. Um, so here's my PowerPoint for the Institute Day uh, presentation that we just went through. Um, and what you need to do is convert it into a PDF. Uh, so here are the slides that I created in the PowerPoint and then um, you just go to print and at the bottom left there's a little thing called PDF. Click that, save as PDF. Okay, and then save it as a PDF. Now I already did this, so I'm just going to back out okay, and close this down. Once it's saved as a PDF, here it is, here's my PDF, I then just drag and drop that right into the window. And that will go through um, and, and process all of the slides that you have in your PowerPoint. Uh, and there you go, and there's the three slides. And now I can add whatever slides I want. So you'll see that the first three slides right now are the PowerPoint slides. But let's say we want to add a video or a poll or anything like that. We just click on the Add button slide and you can pick from any of the templates that it allows. You can add a new slide straight from Nearpod. Um, you can insert a slideshow, so a bunch of pictures that your students will be able to kind of go through at their own pace. You can put a really quick poll, an open-ended question, a quiz, all of those things that you saw in our show me portion of our presentation. Um, so you can just pick on anything you want. Let's say we wanted to add a poll. So you can click poll. Um, does this video help you? Set up your new Nearpod. And then yes or no. So what this gives you the option of doing is letting your students kind of really quick give you your opinion. Um, they can help with um, just checking for understanding. It could be a really quick bell ringer or an exit ticket. Um, it's just a really quick way of getting information from your kids during class. And you can add answers if there's more than one answer. Um, and you can see you can delete. You can add images to your poll. So uh, it doesn't have to just be a straight up question. It can be, you know, kind of like what we did with, uh, um, you know, with adding images of uh, Harrison Ford, for example, as a baby we did um, for the open ending question. So there's always uh, little options to add images. Um, and that's that. Now, a poll is a little bit different than, let's say, a quiz because there's no right answer. Uh, so if you go and create something like a quiz, you know, you can enter a quiz title, which is optional, um, but, you know, does this 
video help you? Yes and no. The difference here is you actually choose by clicking on these possible answers. Now you can notice you can actually choose more than one correct answer. Um, so you can see the add image here. So you can actually add images to quizzes. Uh, so there's all kinds of different things that you can do within. Add answers. You can have a multi-question quiz. This one actually has a correct answer. Um, so if you're displaying the actual presentation up on the uh, uh, up on the projector while you're doing it, you may want to stick to polls because obviously if students answer it wrong, they'll see that they've answered it wrong. Um, you know, polls don't have a right or wrong answer, so it's just kind of nice uh, to kind of keep, you know, keep that a secret. So now, once your presentation is done and you've added all of the slides that you want to, you have all of your quizzes, um, you can check to make sure the arrangement that you have is what you want. If you want to um, change it, you can just go ahead and slide those images of the different pieces around. Whenever you add something, it always adds it to the end. So if you want to insert it into something else, you have to physically move it to where you want it to be. It, there's other options to do, um, you know, and, and you can share it with, with other people. Uh, so like, for example, if you have multiple people in your, um, in your team that all want to do the same the same actual uh, Nearpod, you can share it. Um, you can clone it. So, uh, what? and as I kind of show you the end here, uh, you have to publish your Nearpods. Once they're published, they're no longer changeable, but they can always be cloned. Um, so let's say you, you published it and then following year you want to add to it or change it in some way, you can clone it and that will actually make a copy of it that you can then change. So um, once you're done, you just click done, uh, a little message will pop up saying that you know you can't use this unless it's published if you're totally done and you're and you want to publish it so that it goes to your iPad so it's ready to go you just hit yes uh, this can take some time so just be aware of that um, it can be from anywhere from one minute to an hour for Nearpod to publish uh, the presentation um, so just you know if it's something that you're making last minute it may not be available in time uh, for your class unless you give it some time to do that um, you know I don't want to publish this so I'll just hit no uh, and then it shows up there it is there's the one that we just played with um, you know obviously if I'm like oh I don't like this anymore I can just delete it and it'll go away mm -hmm. And once it is published, you'll notice that these those particular presentations are blacked out. That means that you can no longer edit those. Now they're just for showing. So you would access that and then it can go to your students' iPads. All right, and I'll just show you. So like let's say I, I had a unit three, three review that I did. You know, I want to add questions to it. It's the next year. I would just do clone. And when I do that it will actually make a copy of, um, of it, and now it's not published. So now I can actually change it and do whatever I want to do to it and then republish. Um, and that's how you make changes. And notice that it actually gave it a new name by adding a 1 to the end of it. So, okay. So we're going to go back to the main screen now for a second. And we're going to show you what some of those other options do. So, and they're here at the top. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you don't have to go all the way back out. So, create would be to make a whole new presentation. Engage gives you the option of running Nearpod right from your laptop. So, you can be on your laptop while your students are on their iPads. Um, you can also run it from your iPad by logging in as a teacher whereas your students will obviously log in, log in as students and you will get a code that you give them um, that they will type in and that will give them access to your presentation. So you would just click live session. Um, notice that I've done this one before and says do I want to resume it? If I want to start from the beginning I would just hit no. Uh, up here in the top left hand corner is the pin. This is what the students enter. Students do not need their own Nearpod account. Uh, they just need the Nearpod app and then they enter this where it says student pin um, in, on the actual front page of the of the app the one when they when they go into it uh, then what you do is you control it just with these arrows um, and and on their screen you will they'll actually see 
uh, you know, the, the, the presentation moving through the different slides. Um, if you want to jump ahead to a different slide, you just kind of click down here, um, you know, and then you just hit share and it jumps right to that slide. Okay. Now the pin, when it pops up, that's not anything you have to write down or remember because every single time you start a new presentation, you'll get a new pin. Okay. Now let's say I'm done with this. Um, what you can do is just close it down, and now you're back at your at your main presentation. So that's the engage. Also notice that the only thing that pops up in my engage window are the ones I published. So those other ones that I didn't publish aren't here. So if you're not seeing your presentation here, it's probably because you forgot to publish it. Uh, now the last tab is the assess. Now the assess shows every time you've done a Nearpod um, where students have signed in. So anytime you've started a presentation where students have signed in and actually went through a session. And I can look back and any kind of quizzes, um, all the data from those quizzes will show up here. Um, so I can like click on my, you know, what is biology, um, and I had, here's how many sessions I have, so it tells you, uh, you know, how many students signed in and when. So I can click on a certain date, it has a list of all my students who were who were there. Now notice most of the time I do presentations. I don't have a ton of quizzes. You can see there's no quizzes here. Um, but this tells me that every student participated 100% of the time in all the polls. If you actually do a quiz, um, it actually gives you data on that quiz. Uh, notice I can click on the polls and I can actually kind of see what every student chose for their poll. Okay, so I can go back and look at that. Um, you know, for every single question, okay. Uh, the draw it's, um, basically I, it shows you what their drawing was for this particular thing. Now, uh, I've never actually done um, this from here. I usually do it from my iPad, so I don't know, but there you go. There you can see the picture he did. So, um, and now it, that saves um, pretty much forever. You can download all of this data. Uh, so like it, that's this is more for like a quiz. Um, if you actually did a quiz, uh, that would seem a little bit more um, pertinent. So this would give you something to go back at and take some time to look over if you wanted to record the grade or give them a score for something. Um, you could go back and look at that versus trying to hurry up and copy everything down while you were presenting. And I think that's pretty much it. Um, now there are several different uh, like um, tutorial videos, um, you know, on YouTube. But there's also some videos even within Nearpod. Uh, Nearpod has a pretty good um, help function uh, from the main site. Uh, so you know how it works. You can kind of start there if you're having issues. Um, I'm always open to helping anyone, so you can always come and find me or Miss Genitoni. Um, assuming you are available for help. Uh, I just kind of recommended, you know, I think you yeah. should actually go see Miss Trinitoni. I think you should never see me. Um, you can come and ask me. You can come and ask Nick. I don't know why he's calling me Miss Trinitoni. But you can come to us for help, and, I mean, we'd gladly help you. The best way to learn how to do Nearpod, honestly, is to play with it. And the more you play with it and try to, you know, figure out what it can do and what you want it to do, the better you'll get at it. Um, we hope this video helped you, mm -hmm. give you a little bit of an intro into it, and um, any time that you want to come back and look at this video, we will have it up on our YouTube channel, so you can look at it anytime you want. Okay, and it actually is my YouTube channel, so if you just search um, videos by Nick Del Baccio, you should be able to find it. Um, and I, like I like Miss Genitoni, Elisa said, I don't know why I keep calling her that. I guess I'm used to doing these videos for students. Um, like she said, uh, we're always available to help. So thanks for thanks for coming. choosing our session.